there's there's moment in, in everything that you and I have made together. Mm-hmm. There's and this goes deep into you know the the philosophy of music creation, which is that in, in anything that um in just projects that you and I have worked on as an example, like there's moments in all that which is um which the average listener can listen to and, and find comfort in mm-hmm. moments in there, recognizable sounds, recognizable instruments. Mm-hmm. um song structures that you know they're like oh that's a verse that's a chorus mm-hmm. um but w- you know we try as much as possible to like push the outer edges of that mm-hmm. but you've got to i mean the reason that you and i wanted to make music in the first place is because we heard other people making music and we mm-hmm. go man that's really cool stuff i want to make yeah. stuff like that and mm-hmm. so just because of the nature of that we're always going to be borrowing from yeah. existing stuff you know there's no such thing as like purely new Oh, yeah. sounds or music it's a constant evolution but yeah learning how to kind of push the boundaries of that as much as possible while still you know my name is Dooley, and you're listening to the real you thoughts ideas and perspectives from the ordinary in all of us studio sessions i feel like are a great example of that where um on one side of it i at times sit into the sit at my computer i'm like okay, i have to go in and export this track and then do like X, Y, Z. Um, yeah. And sometimes I can feel like work, but also luckily I, I actually kind of like nerding out on those little things. So I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then there's also, and I feel like we've had this a lot too, where um, like even you've come over, I've gone there, but the joy of you come from this background musically, which is a lot more actually musical and maybe in some more forms of music that are. Um, hey, your, uh, your mic cut out. Oh, wait, can you hear me? Okay, but what I was saying though, the finding like joy in what you do, basically, right? Um, I think with with our, um, like with the studio session stuff, right? You may come from a more classically. My name is Dooley, and you're listening to the real guitar, like thoughts, ideas, background stuff, and ordinary Um, in all of us. And, you know, I come in sort of figuring out beats on my computer, this and that. And then I've gone into a way (laughs) left field bass, like kind of weird bass specifically uh, type of music. But then when we actually go in and, and collab, I feel like it's so fun because I actually like our styles are almost overwhelmingly different. But then there's this bridge of I actually grew up loving all the same stuff. I think that you have did or like different. things. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. But then creatively with you to and myself, my ear to it, to take something that I love that you do and then apply it into its own other realm is like that is the joy of it is. Oh no, there's no yeah. rules here. Like we can, there's normal songs and this and that, but I'm actually kind of going for the, like, how do we break someone's mind a little bit? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so if that's, if that's the case, it's kind of more fun to just go in. Like you're ripping ran crazy solos or just little melodies that, that I'm throwing all these delays on and, um, and your pedal board and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. yeah, I kind of, I love that sort of thing where we go in and there's no pressure to finish the song because we're both trying to, accelerate our career so hyper no no i think it, we're just we we just are messing around when we're doing it. and that's you know i think um part of what makes that so fun is like not having any you know all the creative sort of risk taking you could say mm-hmm. that we're that we're doing right mm-hmm. like um it's like high risk high reward kind of music yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and that and that's fun and mm-hmm. um but to your point i think yeah, absolutely like figuring out how to bridge that gap and um and this can come in or outside of music but with music i think it's particularly exciting when you realize that there's space for what other people are creating within what you're creating or vice versa right and you're like oh this isn't like we don't have to exist in two totally different worlds like we can we can get along and we're you know we're not necessarily like using all the same words but we are speaking the same language and and, you know we are like we are working towards the same thing we're just coming at it from two totally different angles and so a lot of the fun is is uh learning how to put that together but mm-hmm. i mean on on the on the music front like i i think i i i honestly think people are 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 yearning for weirdness at this point and i i think that's like a deeper you know music philosophy conversation that i'm i'm happy to have but um i get so much joy out of like i think you and me both have a hard time listening to 
like really commodified, just kind of straight up like mm-hmm. pop music that's delivered in, you know, through the normal channels. And you and I both love really finding like mm-hmm. odd underground kind of stuff and taking inspiration from that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, yeah, I think whether or not the average listener realizes it, I think that, you know, nowadays we're, we're looking for something that's kind of got a bit of an edge to it. And, mm-hmm. you know, the overly heavy bass stuff may, you know, maybe that's a, a way to, you know, check one of those boxes or scratch that itch for people, you know, or yeah, like yeah. kind of an old school, um, uh, old school rock guitar approach, but, but visited in, in a new context, yeah. uh, I think is also is super exciting. So I do, I do love collaborating with you and we got to do that a little bit more. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. What, what, um, what sort of music stuff have you been focusing on like are you doing your making, oh, man. You're making more beats you mentioned you got a piano lesson later like you just <laughs> yeah. the craft or what sort yeah, of yeah i mean i i i wanted to learn how to play piano from like a, a purely classical approach to it i don't i don't just mean classical music but i do mean like i'm learning i i sort of it's funny when you said earlier that you have like more of kind of a classical training on guitar and it's like <laughs> yeah, you know, I I did take lessons for a while and I had a pretty like con- you know concrete structure to learn in for a while and band classes and recitals and whatever else but um you know that was only for for 4 or 5 years or so and then the rest yeah. of those 15 years that I've been playing I've been just doing whatever I wanted, right? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I I I got the good fundamentals in place and with piano I think I just wanted to take that to another level and and um, take a very theoretical approach to it. And beyond that, I think being just, um, conversational in piano, you know, and being able to throw that into, into the mix of other noises I like to create. Uh, it's such a versatile instrument. And so you can do so much of it. So I think, like I said, just being conversational, being active with it is, is, um, is a ton of fun, but yeah, man, I mean, in terms of stuff I've been exploring lately, there's this, uh, there's this duo, uh, this pianist named Domi and this, this P this, um, drummer named JD Beck. And, and they have a little duo that they, they do really like really neo jazz fusion stuff. And it's really off the wall, odd sounding. It's just the two of them, but it sounds very full and, and super rich music. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but also it sounds really super weird you know, yeah. and it's like definitely an acquired taste a little bit. And I love that. And I've also, I've always been a huge geek for like, I'll call it like pre sixties, um, you know, sort of like Americana music, whether that's, you know, old folk or country music, um, or, you know, early doo-wop kind of stuff, early blues, R and B, you know, yeah, you yeah, get yeah. these old, old guys with guitars that like barely look like they're in tune and stuff yeah, <laughs> and yeah, they're yeah, just yeah. playing out on the porch and whatever, but it's just the, the soul that comes with that music. I love, I love exploring all that stuff. I think, I mean, to be honest, I, I just, there hasn't been anything. There's been some stuff, but the vast majority of stuff that's come out in the last 10 to 15 years, I just like, I get so bored so quickly. It feels like yeah. I've heard it all somewhere, you know, yeah. do you ever yeah, yeah, yeah. feel that way? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 A hundred percent. Even in, even in the weird bass music scene, which is at a standard listening to underground bass is already kind of default weird. And now having <laughs> dived into it a lot, it's like, Oh, I'm almost getting like, not bored of it. Cause at the end of the day, I still, there's so many good, there's so much unbelievable good shit that I have no idea about. Right. But right. I've started to notice the same like feeling a lot of times. And so it's almost recognizing that there's weird among the weird is with not just <laughs> yeah. having the crazy wobs of the thing, but like the fact, like even with your thing, bringing in this sort of crazy Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd guitar into some wub shit is like, there are a lot of people who do the reggae guitar stuff, but it's kind of a different, like, like people like look at it as a, like unfamiliar place in when they're already in an unfamiliar world that is familiar. I don't know how to. If I'm yeah. Saying. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, I there's, also think it's cool. Like it's like to push something that's weird into weirder, but it's not actually that weird. It's just bridge. It's like genre, <laughs> yeah. genre creation clashing. Um, yeah. I just, I, that's what I fuck with. basically. There's, there's moment and everything that you and I have made together 
there's and this goes deep into you know the the philosophy of music creation which is that in, in anything that um in just projects that you and i have worked on as an example like there's moments in all that which is um which the average listener can listen to and, and find comfort in moments in there recognizable sounds recognizable instruments mm-hmm. um song structures that you know they're like oh that's a verse that's a chorus mm-hmm. um but you know we try as much as possible to like push the outer edges of that mm-hmm. but you've got to i mean the reason that you and i wanted to make music in the first place is because we heard other people making music and we mm-hmm. go man that's really cool stuff i want to make yeah. stuff like that and mm-hmm. so just because of the nature of that, we're always going to be borrowing from yeah. existing stuff. You know, there's no such thing as like purely new oh, yeah. sounds or music. It's a constant evolution. But yeah. learning how to kind of push the boundaries of that as much as possible while still, you know. And, and the other thing, too, is like an instrument like the guitar. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's only so much, you know, such a spectrum of noise that I can make out of that. You know, yeah, it's yeah. it's you know, w- without totally ruining, you know, the electrical grid in my neighborhood, I, I can, <laughs> I'm still probably going to sound kind of like a guitar. You yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you're, you're somewhat limited there, but, um, no, I, I, there's, there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can take it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But even with that too, that's almost the nice part about quote an instrument or also even, um, I've discovered this with synth, like bassy synth design is that, there's um, the same way there'd be a guitar and piano, or even more um, like guitar to violin, like staying in the string category, for example. Like there's a couple different sure. ones that you're like, oh, guitar and violin, they're very different, but they still may have like held longer notes versus plucking feelings or stuff. Like that's yeah. also the same with, there's synths or a, even the word synth is just far too big. Like, you know what I mean? Right, like, right, like, right, right. You can make a flute out of a synth, but I'm talking about a leading, what would be a leading element, so like a guitar or a vocal or a bass synth. In that genre, there's, okay, there's the wub thing, there's the hard held, then there's the, like, (laughs) each of the same thing. But it's kind of like, it almost feels like I've found my instrument or a couple collections of instruments that then the same way you you may play your guitar in a ton of different ways or you're going to throw some crazy distortion plug in versus some super clean spacey thing. It's almost, I feel that way within myself is that you're like, Oh, like what instrument do you play? I'm like, I play the laptop, but at the same time, it's um, <laughs> actually, I play like a main leading bass lines in certain ways and then happen to flutter that with a ton of different like yeah. world building basically. Yeah. Like that's, that's kind of how I, that's my, I guess, philosophy of music is it's, world building combined with like driving element and so well, there's a couple of things that you're you're really comfortable expressing yourself with like do you uh like what is it about the lower register the like lower bass tones that you feel like you can uh, express yourself more with you know yeah that's a great question i i've actually found and it's okay. So I've noticed it when this is the like dancing by yourself in a mirror, you know, that like just oh, states like do it like you're dancing by yourself in the mirror feeling. It's sure. that feeling I feel is the, it's the grippingness of it as if it's like you, you're like engulfed in it. I like the engulfed. Mm, like, yeah, I'm, you feel is, like you're in the sound. Yeah, I'm feeling like I'm in the sound. And that's how. I want people to listen to my music and that's how I like to listen to music. Like if yeah. you were to play my shit on the phone speaker scrolling in, you're like, this is fucking terrible. Like it's like, <laughs> yeah. but, yeah. but when you get, when you get into a, a system or a car and not just in a car playing in, in good car speakers, it's like turn it all the way up. It is a left. It is entirely a different experience than if the volume's halfway through. And it's, it's that that I think in the expression of it is when I want people to listen to my music, it's, I see it as an experience or a journey, not like a song. And so right. with that, it's like, if you're going to experience something or go on a journey, you have to be present in that. And so it's that feeling of presence that I think is, I want to bring out in the world and that I've found my biggest inspiration. Is it, And it can be said, you, with, yeah, go. 
do, do you think that there's something like when, when you're standing in front of the speakers at a show mm-hmm. and you know the bass hits you and your whole like you your whole chest your rib cage is shaking yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there's something like um on a not unavoidable you can't like run from that you know like the song the the sound forces you to be a part of it mm, and yeah. i think you know with something i don't know you you listen to a i don't know if, like what's something that's kind of floats on the top like a bluegrass piece or something right like you can kind of tune in and out of that a little bit right mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah. but with the super heavy bass stuff like you're sort of forced to be in it because mm-hmm. sonically it's literally like moving your body yeah <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh do you like would you agree with that that like yeah the, the, the you don't get to escape the bass yeah. once, no, once but, it's turned up to a certain level you're you're trapped yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that's where I go into like the bass music, but then there's the subcategories, right? And not only just subcategories of what would be dubstep or something, but like house music, techno, right? There are these other kind of bass, kick drum, built for system type of music. But it's weird that I would have lesser of that feeling towards like even something like house music compared to dubstep, right? The real only actual difference is like the kick drum is the four on the floor versus the like boom, boom, psh like right 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 so why it, there's also a weird a weirdness to the, my i think lack of understanding about myself or my interest would be well why it's not just that i like like there's all sorts of different subcategories of which some of i love and some i'm like this is just too much or not even too much but just yeah, kind of yeah. or un- uninspiring or unexciting or so there's still like but i think that just comes into the musical taste side of it but i think so I guess that's something I'm still discovering that I don't quite know, but something just draws me into certain, but the overall feeling is the, the unavoidable feeling of presence or knowing that when present in this style, I get this like overwhelming involvement in the emotion of that. So it can be yeah. swag, yeah. swagger, hip hop, like feeling like a boss type shit, but it's also going to be like super sad emotion, just like, or it can be just cool, trippy, weird, like, whoa, what's happening? I'm like crawling in base snakes. Like there's a million <laughs> different little sub feelings, but it's not that I'm actually attracted to each any of those feelings as much as it's the feeling of feeling something. Um, yeah. Yeah. Kinda, like, yeah. But I don't know. I don't know, but that's also not res- held to bass music, which is why I don't just listen to bass music. No, I mean, well, One pull. thing that we yeah. do when we make stuff is you, on on most of the songs that we've collaborated on um like i like you mentioned before like there's a little bit of world building going on there like you tend to kind of build scenes out of your music and it's Mm. more than just like especially because there's not typically a lot of lyrical content Mm. and that's what i think is so there's a hidden like superpower to me to music without lyrics Mm-hmm. which is that the the person whoever's listening gets to kind of make their own conversation in their head yeah. that goes along with the song right yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. the content of the music isn't chosen for you you yeah. get to make whatever you want it to be if there's no mm-hmm. lyrics and that's like that's why the love song trope is just so frustrating to me at this point it's like i don't care like how many more breakups are you going to write about in your songs <laughs> you know i just don't i get it like i yeah, 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 breakups yeah. suck i told i t- trust me i totally get it but like you know you don't need another uh, another album dedicated to how you feel when you're breaking up. Like let's yeah. give the listener a choice, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. we were, we were working on a piece. I remember um, where you and I were like, you know, we maybe were had indulged a little bit in something, but we were, you know, talking about like, <laughs> let's, let's give this like a kind of a Western, like cowboy thing. Yeah, there's yeah, no, yeah. there's no lyrics. And, and I had borrowed from some, you know, musical um, elements that, are kind of hallmarks of that Western feel or what, or whatever, Um, you know, that spaghetti Western kind of feel to it. Mm -hmm. But it was like, you know, I think at one point we added like if the sound of like a horse running in the the song or something, it was like, you know, there's no lyrics, but you know exactly what's going on. Like you can put yourself there, you know, you're, there's a, there's a tumbleweed, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. rolling across the road and you're like, it's, you know, noon o'clock and you're about to do a shootout with the guy. But yeah, there's yeah, no, yeah. I haven't given you any words to describe that. I've just yeah. let you know that you're there via the sounds. Mm-hmm. And I think it's my personal opinion that that 
that resonates with me and, and what I want to create so much better than like, you know, poetry that just happens to be, you know, over a, over an acoustic guitar backdrop or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And that's true too. There's, I mean, obviously there's beauty in any form of art and whatever, but coming to that point is um, actually literally today, there's a song I've got them trying to release and it starts with these big um, horns. It's like, bum, bum, bum. and um, Pete <laughs> said to me today, he's like, Oh yeah, the intro kind of sounds, there's this bass music guy named Sudden Death. Um, he's, like, he's like, oh yeah, it kind of sounds like more like a sudden death intro. It's got the thunderstorm rain, like. Yeah, like, yeah. But it's, but it's interesting because I didn't, when I got into my car, I was driving, you know, I'm thinking about what Pete had said about it. I actually listened to this podcast, um, we got a blanket on the name of it, but he describes all different sorts of music albums, deep, long form. And then he has this other side one that, talks about the different emotions of music or long story short, there's an episode on like the sound of like, what does death sound like? And it talks mm. about kind of the history of music in like the OG days, like whatever, thousands of years ago, like when people were having these, they've discovered upcoming like musical write-ups, but it's like the note of D, right? You come into more sad kind of intense, but it's like D, yeah. D flat, or flat or whatever it is. I don't know what the actual two are, but there's two that have become like iconic the same way the Western has its, you'll, you just know when it's got the twang to it. And yeah. my, he like played a sample of one of the, the songs in this podcast I was listening to. And it was, it went like, mm-hmm. and it was the, it was the exact same horn element that I had subconsciously done with my thunderstorm. Yeah. Like, yeah. Sound. And the same thing that Pete is like, Oh yeah. It kind of sounds like sudden death. And, and regardless of the guy's name being sudden death, he makes a bunch of, deathly music <laughs> and so um but it's just like interesting connecting all these points of like that accidental feeling of intensity that the intro of the song has and it comes from that like tension of death and that like fear yeah. element at which i'm trying to provoke is you hear the song and you're like oh, okay what's happening but um yeah it's like there's no words about that there's no words about anything in there it's just you know that it's the tension of like fear um, and it just comes from the two notes and some world building of these kind of engulfing horns that are like, oh, fuck, yeah. like, shit's coming and I don't know what it is. <laughs> you know what does that super well is is film scores. Mm-hmm. Like if you ever just listen to film scores just by themselves, yeah, um, it's uh, it's it almost is like you could have written it either way. Like you could have written the movie to when it's done right, right? Like you could have written the movie to the film score. But obviously the film score is probably written to the movie and, and yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. timed out for various scenes and stuff. But mm-hmm. sometimes when it's done, like when Hans Zimmer absolutely kills it yeah, and you're like, dude, that is just so there's no lyrics. There's no nothing, but I know exactly what's going on in this scene. Even if I haven't yeah. seen the movie, yeah. even if I don't know what scene it correlates to, if I have seen the movie, you yeah. just get this feel like music does so much of the explaining for you. And that has a lot to do with like, you know, the, the context, the 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 patterns that in Western culture we like get so used yeah. to falling into musically, you know, that's, that certain scales are associated with certain moods and whatever yeah, yeah, else. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, man. I mean, dude, those the um, the uh, you ever listen to guys that like the New Zealand All Blacks or whatever mm. before the the rugby games and they do the yeah, haka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you like, dude, that's scary as shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be I'd be super intimidated going up against that. Yeah, and it's yeah, just yeah. over you gotta imagine over hundreds of years, they just slowly came up with this art form that's like, wh- how do we make sound mm-hmm. without vision, without context, without saying, I mean, I think there are definitely words that are being spoken in the haka, but without, you know, yeah. a, a necessarily like a super overt message. Like, how do we just get this to sound in a way that I know is gonna elicit a feeling out of you? Yeah, and that's yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. dude. That's that's a yeah. It's been going on for for thousands of years for yeah, sure. Right. <laughs> yeah, but it's fun getting a taste of it, um, like subconsciously. If that makes sense too. Like within, and then I guess you're like people can study this deeply, and then to the point of the movie score stuff. There's a lot of those people who are making the scores are so hyper aware of this that they they come on the job and they're like we know, okay, we see the emotion. They talk to the people. Like, let's create that. I almost think it's more fun. Like I, I'm just almost blind to it, but, and this is the case with everyone is, you know, the feeling though, 
Like when a song's yeah. even just goofy, it's like you know it sounds it's just a goofy song or if it's scary or if it's, <laughs> yeah. um, but I think that's what I love about music as a whole is it's like so truthful. Like it doesn't need totally. explaining. Yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't need you to know? Be, you can just put it out there and you're like, I don't need to justify this. You know what yeah. you know what I'm trying to get across here. Let's yeah, just yeah, listen yeah. to it. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And that's where I think I like the full circle to the feeling of the bass thing is you get that knowing of the feeling more when you're fully present and engulfed in it. And so I've sure. found a beauty in the art of really trying to like engulf you in it. Like the bass noise is like a like it's like a literal yeah. I'm being eaten by this bass. And so um, that kind of, yeah, it's just, I come back to presence. Cause I even think of the song we have where you're like, all right, there's cool intro guitar part, then transformer noises, <laughs> cool <Yeah>. intro <laughs> laser beams. Um, yeah. Laser beams. Yeah. A lot of laser beams. <laughs> yeah. um, so the laser beam section is fun and everything, but still the intro guitar part or whatever, it's just as presenting. It's not like, I guess it's sure. music wise, but at the same time, it's any music can do that. Um, it's just, I don't know, finding a way to do that context of listening to it, having the right aspects people connect with. Like some people might just love the spacey guitars and that's what brings them into the song. And then they fall into the sure. yeah. laser section. Um, but that's kind of that familiarity combined with the expected and unexpected. I mean, that's music theory, like one one I feel like is. Yeah. Yeah. Just hey, subvert expectations. Forward. But then, oh, now it goes up, and all of a sudden the listeners hooked back in, and you have another four bars, hook them back yeah. in. Like, um, which again, I drastically don't understand that well, but I know, <laughs> the, I know the feeling of it, and I get where it's kind of like keep them comfortable, but push them out of the comfort zone, which yeah. is I think a magical space for any any thing. It's like the feeling is all you need to to be able to go then reproduce it. Right. Like you're, and I think that as musicians, that's really all you're doing is just like chasing those feelings again. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I can speak to that like super directly, like there's, um, you know, songs that I've learned over the years where you're like, I just want to be able to give myself the feeling of listening to that song all the yeah. time. And I'm yeah. going to do it by just playing that by myself. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 I, uh, so the the feelings all you need to, to really be able to, and then obviously like a you know what a knowledge of of the tools and stuff to make the song, but that comes later. But yeah. um, have you ever thought about like, did it ever bum you out that your music it just translates better in in a live setting versus like you know if you were to just send me it doesn't do justice to listen to the songs just over the phone like you said right if I just yeah. held my phone speaker up. But that's so much of how music is consumed nowadays. Yeah. Like, do you feel like some of the stuff just doesn't doesn't get the audience because you know mm. when you listen to it in AirPods, it's just like mm. is half of what it is when they go see you live. Or is it like is that something that's worth embracing and being like, no, listen, if you you know, I'll I'll, I'll release my stuff out there on Spotify or whatever. But if you really want to hear my music, you've just got to come experience yeah. it. So I actually. Yeah, that's a great, great question on stuff. I actually think that is where the misunderstanding and the beauty of the like DJ scene starts to happen is there's people who, okay, there's a lot of people who like DJ and play stuff, but then there's the reality that, no, to, to have a setup and an experience in a big sound system with the proper lighting effects, like in that and more encompassing feeling, it's, um, and we've talked about this, like, why would I go watch some person who's just going to play? Like, it's not live. Like they're just clicking play on songs. Right. Yeah. 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 And yeah. There's the, that's the kind of a little bit of the demoralizing sort of, Oh yeah. something. And then there's this whole subculture of people, I think quote, who like get it more and not say sure, you don't sure. quite get it, but in the way of people recognize, Oh no, to curate um, a set around this, and I'm very hyper on the world building, but just the, like, you know, someone's sound, like people, sure. come, even if they're all making the same sub genre of music, if you listen to one person's set and then another person's set and then another person's set, you will be like, you'll, you'd have a preference on whose set you enjoyed for what reasons. Cause yeah. they have a sound. It's like, 
knowing that and combined with this is how it's supposed to be listened to because this is where you just get taken through it at like another level. Um, yeah. So that's almost where too, I still um, crave and enjoy going to shows, even if I've heard their, a lot of their music before it's like, there's this combined mystery of well, what are they actually going to play? Mm. And then on top of that, even if I know the song, it's like, yeah, familiarity again. And then on top of that, it's like, also, it's just slapping how it's supposed to. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I do think it's really important. And then there's the, the fun side of that thing, which is exact what I'm in of having a very small following, but feeling like I put a ton of effort into like very high production level sounds. It's like there's almost this little secret mystery world that you can get access to that is what I would consider my world of art. Um, but it's kind of like, it's not just accessible all the time. Like you have to kind of come, like come, join go look me on this, come join me on this adventure, essentially. Um, yeah. If people and slowly, that's how you, I guess, slowly gain a following or whatever is people actually go like, Whoa, Holy shit. This actually is quite the little thing here. Like I want to go to the next show where I got to tell my friends about this or it doesn't actually yeah. matter. But my point is um, it's something you, and but that's all live music too, is you kind of get this, fun little version of it but it's just as valid i think in the in the dj kind of like you're clicking play on songs but you're also you're taking people through through a world just as you would any other live set i I, those um i've got a a co-worker that's been to like over a hundred fish shows yeah (laughs) and i was like asking him about i was asking him about his favorite song like is that their favorite song that you have or whatever like i'm not a big fish fan but like get you know get me into this show like there's yeah. got to be something if you've been to a hundred shows or whatever. And he's yeah. like, dude, honestly, I haven't listened to a single studio album that they've ever put out. Yeah. And that's, that speaks to exactly what you're saying. It's not that um, they don't release studio music. It's just, you don't get it unless you're there and you listen yeah. to them play a song that one song for an hour. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, I see what's going on. Like, this yeah. is just different. And there's no yeah. way you could have gotten that in the five minute snippet you hear come on on the radio. Yeah, you've yeah, you've yeah. got to be there. I wonder if there's a, um, you know, obviously the pandemic put a huge halt on a lot of that, but you know, I wonder if there's room for artists going forward to just like reject or or put minimal effort into having their music be commercially reachable, whether that's Spotify or Apple Music or you know whatever else, radio or you know SoundCloud, however you want to disperse it. Um, and put minimal effort into that and then focus full time on just like curating a live audience mm. yeah, and, yeah. and just, you know, having that be your full, your full focus. I, I did an internship with a bluegrass group when I was in college mm. and, uh, it was super interesting, but th- I think that's kind of where those guys wanted to go a little bit. It's just, mm. it's really hard to do, you know, it's hard to people to get it's hard to get people to get tickets and come yeah. to your shows and, and buy in on something unless they've tested your product already yeah. and listened to your stuff somewhere and been like, Oh, you know what? I, I need to go see that guy live. Cause I can't imagine how much better it is. So yeah, yeah, there's yeah. that weird, like, I don't want to call it a paradox, but you've kind of got that like impasse of like, mm-hmm. well, I need to get my stuff out there at some form mm-hmm. in some easily consumable form so that I get some traction on it. But really, you're not going to understand the full experience unless you come see me deliver this. Yeah, 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 yeah. The perfect example is actually this Friday, we're going to a show that kind of got swooped into. It's not exactly my style, but um, do you know Excision? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Excision is like the mecca of Chompy just... And first off, legend of bass, like have my fullest 1,000th respect. Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But at the sense of like, Coming to subgenres, he is very much like the leader of like rhythm, which is like, like it's just a slightly different <laughs> yeah. thing, and it's it's intense. But the perfect example is he puts out, you know, he puts out a lot of music, or almost people don't even care at that at this point anymore because he is he put out probably an album, I guess, a couple months ago or something. I'd say maybe as you know, twenty thousand, thirty thousand plays on per song, something like that. Some songs, but like he has songs that have millions and millions of views, but. The point is, is like the streaming of his music is sure. Like, like that's good. He's got listens, but every single night he is selling out 30,000 person venues. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, he's not, he's like 
it doesn't even come close to translating it where what's actually going on. So from the outside world, you're like, oh, he has got X amount of followers on whatever and this many streams, but he will without a doubt, 100% sell out the most epic. Like I literally think he has, like he, I don't know if it was a world record or something, but I remember it was some group. Oh, no, fucking Pete. Pete was telling me about um, his last show. He had like the most lasers of any show ever. <laughs> like, like the most lasers. And then this show. Double down on the lasers, dude. No, he, he has laser. He, he has the, and lights, like he has the biggest production, I, I think, ever to exist in humanity. And <laughs> on like Friday, he's like doing more lasers than last time. So it's like a, crazy. I'll yeah. send you a yeah. clip of his thing. It's literally, you're looking, you just, it's laughable. Like I look at, we're, we're making jokes all week. <laughs> yeah. He does the thing. He bridges the gap of some just kind of cheesy stuff, but um, like super head banger type of stuff. And we're kind of laughing about it, but at the same time, we're like, let's just go. We'll, you know, get, you know, party night with the, with the squad. And we'll have, I don't even care about the music at this point. We'll just go to the back and like, like fucking laser. Yeah. 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 Just, just let it come to me. Yeah, I don't even care what's about to happen. Let's just fucking kick it there and hang out with Harry who's moving out of the country soon. Like, we're just having a fun time. <laughs> yeah. But it speaks, it speaks to the... He's getting more... He's selling more tickets every single night on tour for... He's been on tour for like six years. I don't even... He, he's undefeated. I don't know what's going on. But he gets more people showing up to a show every single night than like most of his songs at streams. And it's like... Right, right. You're like, okay, there's some, something's going on here. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly it's, clearly it's not Spotify that's driving his, yeah. you know, interest. It's these people that go to the shows and then they come back and it's like you said, like they tell their friends, they're like, listen, mm-hmm. you can listen to it if you want, but yeah. you yeah. need to come here and watch this because this is a totally different. Yeah. I've yeah. got to believe that exists. I have to believe that exists in, in different genres. And there's... There's new ways to make that happen. I think that the heavy bass focused music, like we were talking about the, at the beginning of this pod, which is that it forces you to be present because it's literally grabbing your body and shaking yeah. you, you yeah, know? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think that lends itself incredibly well, but it was also the the jam band scene and, and going all the way back to, uh, the stuff that I geek out on twenties and and thirties and stuff. You had these legendary big band jazz um, mm-hmm. groups, particularly in in you know black areas of the of the country and um, in parts of cities where you know they never re- nothing was ever written or recorded, yeah. but they they just have legendary reputations as just being yeah. the best band to go swing dance to. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. that's how that all started. Like there was no there's no records of these guys. But yeah. they're legends in their own right because people were like, "Oh man, I was there back in the day when they, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. they when they were all together." And so mm-hmm. there's there's something to that, and I I get a little disappointed when um, I see you know music get like hyper commoditized like that. When you're like, "Listen, I think that we're kind of missing the point of music as kind of the expressive form," and instead of it's just become like you know these little sound bites or whatever, but. Mm. Yeah, there's even people with with TikTok. Um, I've noticed this one producer who I follow, who's he's more of like tutorial producer. He puts out some music and sell he sells beats and stuff. But um, he's one of those kind of more uh, just found his own like business path in that sort of realm. Sure, and he makes um, he's one of those like people who keep just consistently goes viral on TikTok with his beats. But I've noticed like his, for example, his bass is it's super simple beats. But the, like when he's doing, he's like playing his little beat live on his piano and like looping it, and then people rap over it. He's um, the basses he picks are so like thong thong thong, like super or like staticky eight oh eights that are very essentially all phone driven. Listen, like uh, as, a, as the producer, I can as a ear of what's actually going on. I'm like so not my style of a beat. It's got yeah. the simple clap and the hi hat, and then this bass that's like super audible, but I'm listening to it on a Instagram post or something, but but yeah. that's, that's the audience for it. Is he's doing it going viral on these social platforms and TikTok, um, which not to say there's anything wrong with that, but it's just a no, no, no. Seeing even a production built for the mobile phone versus I have songs where you can't even hear the bass if you like put your ear up to the speaker, or, but at the same yeah, time, yeah. Like, you put it in a car. It's like mm, mm, like. 
it's just a different intention too behind how it's meant to be listened to. Do you um do you remember um Joey Charbel? Is uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah he, he raps under the name Seppi now. And yeah. if this if this has an audience whatsoever, people should go check him out. He's he's great. <laughs> um, but he, he and I were talking. Uh, we met up like around New Year's, and he was like, "Man, I don't I don't release anything that's over like three minutes long because mm-hmm. people just don't have the patience for it anymore." You yeah. know, like we're so people just are so used to scrolling past, you know, millions of of forms of media a day, you know, yeah. just little videos, little videos, little pictures, little videos, little sound bites. And so, yeah. you know, people lose focus super quickly. I think the days of like creating a big, you know, epic ballad are honestly, unfortunately probably over, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but here again, you've got, you know, fish and the grateful, you know, dead and co and stuff that still have fiercely, um, fiercely loyal fan bases uh, and they're out here playing one song for 40 minutes at a time. So obviously there's an audience for it, but I think, yeah, in terms of approachability, like I don't think there's much that's going to be created in the next 10 to 15 years. That's going to be, you know, not easily consumed in a short amount of time with a minimal amount of effort from your ear with, with yeah. listening. Yeah, uh, yeah. Even though I think subconsciously listeners want to be challenged a little bit more. Yeah. Um, it's just so hard to compete with stuff that's easy to, you know, yeah, shovel yeah, in yeah. your mouth and like keep chewing. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, uh, our song, the Beach Murdo one. Do you remember that song? It's yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like more jam bandy one that we did. It's like no, no, no lasers, just except one. <laughs> yeah. I think there's only one, which is kind of it's like my favorite part because it's literally one just like shout out to the wub, but it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like one of them um, acknowledging the laser. Yeah, yeah. It's acknowledging it. Recognize the laser. Um, but no, that song's a perfect example. I genuinely like fucking love that song and can play it in the context of if we're outside on a sunny day having beers and i just snuck that into a mix of some classic rock they wouldn't notice whatever. they wouldn't notice no we wouldn't notice if anything it's a yeah. great vibe it's like got this uplifting but thing and it breaks into multiple solos or what but again it's maybe 200 views or something but i'm like god damn it it's like frustrating it's frustrating like knowing that something that I find to be like dank, separate of us making it or being whatever. It's like, it's just not in the market or, and even like from quote my brand or putting it out there in terms of music style, it's not going to. So it's just the frustrating part of creating art and music just for the sake of creating it, which I feel like is what I love to do and what you love to do. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing that there's this other side of it, which is okay. Well, once you share it, like, is it going to get traction? We're going to listen to it. And just sort of that, fuck, if you're making an eight-minute jam band song, like, people just aren't going to listen to this unless you are not, or unless you are Fish or Denko. And even then, I don't even know. <laughs> and if your favorite part, by the way, is is six minutes in, yeah. like, nobody's going to get to your favorite yeah. part, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like the feeling that you need to kind of rush into the good stuff because you want to keep people's attention. Mm-hmm. I totally get it. It's tough. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah. mean... I've been making these little just guitar playing Instagram videos for like all 12 of my Instagram followers. And (laughs) the video that got like, you know, uh, uh, a exponentially higher amount of views than I have followers. So I know it was like passed around and whatever. It's like a cover of this Maroon 5 song. I'm like, man, really guys? Like this is what we... (laughs) This is what we want. <laughs> yeah, 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 I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just joking around. Like I thought this was funny, you yeah, know. And yeah, I had yeah. a bunch of people reaching out to me, like, "Dude, so sick! Can you teach yeah. me how to learn that? Send me the tabs." I was like, "Bro, it's like a Coldplay song. Basically, it's got yeah. three chords in it. Like, go go learn it yourself. It's it's yeah. it took me two minutes. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, that's what you guys are interested in. It's I agree with you. It is a little bit of a bummer, but you got to play the game sometimes. And I mm-hmm. think. That'll be, um, I don't know, man. Maybe that's what we talk about next time. It's like just how to how to walk that tightrope a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even just yeah, letting go of it too. It's kind of like, fuck the tightrope. Like if we just keep creating, right. keep sharing stuff and eventually people maybe discover, feel your shit or don't. And who really cares at that point? If you like, again, finding the joy. If you find the joy in just making shit anyways, like Absolutely. at the end of the day, you're, you're winning. So. Absolutely. 100%. 100%, dude.
Cool. Well, um, we can wrap, we can wrap it there on, you know, you got the piano lesson coming up here, but, uh, I do have the piano lesson. Yeah, dude. Well, listen, um, this has been a blast and I would love to, love to keep doing this. So yeah, yeah. You let me know and, uh, we can just kind of stay on this trope or talk about anything else you got in your mind. I, are you doing this on like a schedule? Or are you just trying to talk to as many people as possible? I'm kind of with talk to as many people and whoever and just do it. And right now I've scheduled out things to go out. Um, okay. I'm doing it like once a week, but I've taught, I've already got a bunch scheduled. So this would be like later, but then there's part of me that's okay. Well, maybe if I have an overload of conversations, I could just release them twice a week for a bit or something. You know, I have no, my, my thought is just put it out there again. I take the, um, my processes go in, we chat. Then after this, it's like export it, do the audio, put it in iMovie. And then it's usually split it into like two parts just so it's more digestible. Same thing. <laughs> Instead of an yeah. hour long thing, it's people are just if 20 minutes of it's these topics and the other 20 are these topics, then title it by essentially whatever the main topic theme is. Um, and then from there, uh, sometimes as I'm just clipping, um, see if there's little sound, sound clip bites that might be of, of interest. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking like, I might even kind of just start doing like TikTok or some shit. I don't use TikTok. I've never like, I don't consume. But I don't, <laughs> Dude, I'm like, you don't have to I can't consume. be of any help with that, but no, yeah. No, that's I mean, I'm like, there's nothing to, there's nothing to create or consume. It's just I'm like, just go release little minute clips on there. And yeah. Yeah. More of like a, so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm like, why not just do this? It's, you know, you take a little bit of time after the conversation to just make it digestible in some way by via putting it on the podcast site, to get distributed. And then, um, uh, so basically that that's exactly where I'm at with everything is just have a bunch of combos kind of clip it out. And then I don't know, like you just see what happens. Yeah, I don't like even care if people fuck with it. It's like, I fuck with it. Like I was cool talking <laughs> yeah. about this shit. Like I, it's fun to, I agree. Learn about um, it'd be cool to, yeah, do this in like a little bit more of a, of a studio setting just mm-hmm. for like the visuals of it too you know, and, and maybe there's a way to work in some of our creative process on this stuff too. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. work in little, little snippets of us creating stuff, but we can brainstorm on that later. Um, I I appreciate you having me on Dooley. I'll talk to you in a little bit, man. Yeah. yeah, We'll jam jam soon too, though. We just got to fucking lock in. I got some new tunes that might be of interest. So we, you know, I mean the new tunes, dude. All right. All right. All right. right, Peace, man.